Um, right, based on Anna's Fitbit from this morning, we've all done about 2,000 physical steps and around 48,000 mental steps. So it's been quite the mental workout today. Um, there's been some awesome speakers uh, throughout the day that obviously highlighted for the red meat sector uh, a number, number of uh, challenges, but that's nothing new for us, a uh, number of opportunities. So now is at the time where we really want to download because by the end of today, when you leave, you really want to be able to take something away today that's added value to you personally and potentially to your business, whether you're a farmer or a rural professional or a scientist looking for something that you can do to, to support the sector even further. So it's really about time to reflect on what we've heard today, what struck a chord, um, and what can we maybe work on after today. So the, first, the next 25 minutes, we're going to give you that chance to do that reflection and, and downloading uh, with an activity. And the second 25 minutes is picking up on what you come up with is, is some things you would like to explore further and how maybe the RMPP Action Network could support you and a small group of farm businesses work on that. So what is this Action Network we're hearing about? What is it a vehicle for and is it worth you considering getting involved? Is there something in it for you? So that's the next 50 minutes. So to start with first 25 in our download session, it's like the cool down phase of a, a full body workout, so we may need some support. So we've um, garnered the help of an awesome facilitator support team in the uh, beef, and fam, uh, beef and Lamb Farmer Councillors um, and a few Riggins from today. So if I can just get all the, we've got some facilitators, any more if they can go and stand down the back. And for the audience, we want to create full tables of six or seven people at each table. So if you've got four plus, stay where you are. Anyone else? So this side would like to, you guys to move more in and fill up the gaps. So take the opportunity to move and sit with people you don't know. So six or seven at every table focused around this middle section. Right, so... Just to whiz through the couple of steps, we have got the steps listed out on the two white sheets hanging up on the wall at the back, plus up here on the whiteboard, um, but your facilitators are going to guide you through the steps, and we're going to be the bossy ones up the front to keep a good check on time. So it's going to need to be quite fast paced, we don't want you to overthink things, but we do want the chance for you to, as I said, download. So. First step is going to be for you each just individually to take a minute and think back over the day and what has struck a chord for you. What's jumped out is something you'd like to explore further for your business. And write down on your pads two, three, four things, right? So that's going to be your first minute or two. Then you're going to share your list with your neighbour. Just in pairs. Okay, so you're going to have a yarn with your neighbour. Then you're going to pick your top two things. If you could just have one or two things to work on, what would they be? And you're going to write them on your post-it. That's going to be step three. Then you throw those up on that white piece of flip chart your facilitator's got and discuss them as a table before theming them. Right? But let's just start and your facilitators will guide you through it and we'll be the timekeepers. So the first minute should be absolute hush. Just reflect over the day for yourselves and what has struck a chord from what you've heard or seen today. Sorry. Right, so you've collected your ideas on your pad. Pick someone to your left and just have a yarn about what you've written down. Just in pairs. Okay, just wrap up your conversation. You really are so good. We run courses with 12 people and we can't get this level of control. It's just awesome. Um, step three, choose one to two things from your list or that has come out of your discussion that you really would like to explore or dig deeper further that's going to add value to your business. Maybe staff recruitment's come out for you today. 
riparian planting, something that you've been thinking about on the business that you'd like to investigate, and write one each on a post-it. So just a couple of words to capture that thing you'd like to explore further. Get your post-its and write one to two things, and then put it on your flip chart page. So facilitators, if you can get all of the post-its and put them on your white page. For facilitators, if you can read back to the group all of the ideas that are on the post-its, and maybe ask each person, whoever's idea it is, might want to give a bit of comment around what is that idea and why. So just briefly as you mention a, a comment or a post it to the table, just ask the person that wrote it to share a little bit of detail around that and why they wrote that down. So it would be quick fire, don't, don't over talk it. Let's go. Okay, let's move into step five. Collect all these pearls of wisdom we can see on the post-its. Step five, at your tables, see if there's any themes emerging. So are there any clusters of topics or similar themes coming out? And if facilitators can help write what those themes are in a pen down the bottom of your flip chart. So pull all the post-its into groups with similar themes, then write the theme at the bottom. Okay, let's just hear, it would be interesting, there's 15 tables in the room, let's just hear a couple of the themes that are coming out. So just do a, a random pick, maybe Ruben's table. <laughs> Sean, what's just, just one theme that um, cluster? Culture, Culture and behaviour, right, in terms of staff and building a, a culture and behaviour of, of your team. Okay, so sharing. building this culture of where we have the sharing of ideas, um, how we like to behave throughout the whole business and perhaps between businesses. So this culture of sharing. Did that come up for any other groups? Team environment, people are important. This table here, you got it as well? Yeah. Yep, awesome. So some common theme coming out there. Jeff and your table, one of your themes that came out. Um, hang on, Mike coming. Oh, sorry. Environmental <laughs> management and... Um, yeah. Environmental management and you know, the use of the ETC, you know, um, carbon credits and that sort of thing, you know. Um, yeah. Groups of people wanting to yeah, further explore that. Awesome. Who else? What other tables had the environmental issues and challenges on their list? Yep, so another five tables in that area. And one one other theme that we haven't touched on. Who's got something else? Yep, Jeremy. We had a, a large cluster around how we're going to get everybody involved in all the aspects of the Origin brand. So bringing people with us, um, media perceptions, um, quality assurance, brand confusion and addressing that. So there's a whole bunch of Awesome. So there's some buy into that origin, origin brand. How do we spread that across the sector to all those that have got a role in it? Did that origin brand, our New Zealand Red Meat story, come up for anyone else? Yep. Yeah? One, two, three, another three tables. Four, five, four. Yep. Awesome. So within this room, we actually all share with others some common things that we'd like to work on and address which is really cool. I'm going to hand over to Denise to talk about the Action Network um, and its background. Can I ask all the facilitators to bring your flip chart paper to the back of the room on the tables? Cool. Thanks, Mel. So if you're able to do that and wander around. Which one are you as a facilitator? Cool. What we wanted to do now was just give you a little bit more background to RMPP Action Network. Uh, because we know RMPP hasn't been very good at telling our story. Um, and so we want to you know, tell you a bit about the background and tell you more about RMPP Action Network um, to give you a bit of a feel for it. Uh, so RMPP started off back in 2013 and we did a lot of research. And um, one of the things that we got involved with and we started up with the meat processor partners uh, within RMPP 
was some extension projects that they were leading. Um, and that's the area that I've been working in. Uh, and it was really to come up with like, you know, what are some ideas for extension? How can we do this? Um, and it's really where Action Network, RMPP Action Network came from. So I wanted to, I could stand up here and tell you all of the amazing stuff that we got from uh, the, the farm pilot program uh, with a whole range of farmers across New Zealand, about 70 farmers across New Zealand that were involved. Uh, but I think it's best if you actually hear it from people who are involved. So I'm just going to play a really short clip from David and Sarah Smith. Uh, they were part of an ANSCO-led small group down in Otago Southland. Uh, and so this is some of their story. The small group approach through the RMPP has suited us best because we get to um, form relationships with the other farmers. So the field trips that we've been on through the RMPP have been fantastic and we always come home feeling really inspired and energised and full of new ideas. Um, and one thing that gets reiterated every sort of property we go to is that these top performing farmers don't have some magic trick that the rest of us don't know about. They're just doing the basics and doing them really well. Um, and timing is critical for everything and there's often only a small window to, to make a change that's going to have a big impact. So when we got back from our last field trip after visiting some really cool properties, um, we decided to reassess where we were at and so we broke our farming business down into sections and wrote lists of everything we do in each section and then did a SWOT analysis on uh, each of those sections and that really helped us clarify our goals and priorities and made us sort of plan of where we were going next. Running a farm business is complex and you know, you're expected to be an agronomist, a soil scientist, a vet, a financial planner, a mechanic, you know, the list goes on and not everyone can be good at everything. So I think it's really important to find the people that can fill those gaps in your business and that you can lean on for advice or um, help on things that you're, you're not so good at. On the recent field trip we were on, we had Tom Fraser with us and we were at a farm that had used him 10 years prior probably and they're in a very similar position to what we are now back then and Tom really helped them through so I seized the moment and went and asked Tom when we could get him on farm basically and from that we've sort of um, started a team around us so we've got an advisory board on basically starting up now we're starting to feel our way of who we want and who we can trust in our business now the RMPP program that we've been in We've learnt a hell of a lot out of it in the last two and a half years that we've been in it. Um, it's been great for our farming business and I highly recommend if anyone gets approached or wants to get into it, approach RMPP to yeah, join in to the new action groups that they're setting up. To hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Um, so that program's been running for three years now that um, uh, David and Sarah started back in June 2015. Uh, and we're just wrapping that up. But what I, we just wanted to emphasise that this is where RMPP Action Network has come from. And particularly what we've learnt from it, um, the elements that make up uh, Action Network have kind of come together in um, a framework, a model, if you like, for how to do stuff. And I'm just going to make sure I can find the right pen. So I'm going to take you through that, just to, again, give you an idea of where, where we're coming from and why we talk about some things. So you saw the video with David and Sarah, and the key thing is, it was David and Sarah, it was the team. It wasn't just an individual, it was both of them, and it could, that looked different across different groups, and it will look different in action groups as well. It could be a manager and an owner, it could be a work worker um, and a manager, you know, it's different, but it's about the farm team being at the center. And I think in that, in that clip, um, they talk about the fact that you know they, they bring both bring things to the, the table. So the farm team is at the very centre. Around that, we have activities, we have information and resources, and support and follow up. And what we really didn't give you um, a chance to hear from David and Sarah was just the amount of help. Uh, or accountability, if you like, having a group around them was. Because it's a group of people that are interested um, and part of your journey. 
Uh, and so they mentioned that, hey, you know, the, the group would ask them, how are you doing on that? You know, we talked about that at the last group meeting. How are you going with that? So there's this need to not only just have activities and not just have great information and resources, but also that support and follow up. And things like having a group around you, having a, um, a team, and now the Smiths have taken it the next level. Uh, David uh, talked about the farm business advisory team that they've got now around them. And so they're really trucking with the support and follow up, which is really cool to see. So we're saying this is the center of what we're doing. And around that, what else we got out of um, doing the farm pilot program and learning from all of this is some key roles. And one of the key roles, and I, and I, again, I talk about this because we, we use these words when we talk about RMPP Action Network. We use the words, and I want to kind of give you a feel for where they've come from and why we, why we use those words. So one of the things we talk about is connectors. So in David and Sarah's case, the ANSCO guys, the um, stock reps initially, and then the agribusiness team um, were the connectors to bring that group together. Yeah? Um, so they got to know those farm businesses and had a bit of an idea about some of the challenges and, I, um, uh, and, the, and issues they were facing. Um, and so that, that connector role is really key. Uh, and the ANSCO guys have kind of continued with that group to be connectors. So it hasn't just been um, a one-off thing in that case. Another key role is a facilitator role. Because it's all very well getting together in a group, but we've all had those group meetings where we kind of go around in circles um, and you've spent way too much time on one thing and it's just a waste of time. Good facilitation is actually key to this stuff. Um, and so RMPP have been working on uh, facilitator training programs. We've got two um, courses in particular that are relevant for RMPP Action Network, the Lead Facilitator course and the Action Network Fundamentals course. We've had over 200 rural professionals through the Lead Facilitator course now and over 138, no actually I think it is exactly 138 rural professionals through both courses. Now not all of them are going to be facilitators, some of them are connectors, some of them are facilitators and some might end up being experts which is another key role. So there's some stuff happening here. And you heard David and Sarah talk about Tom Fraser. One of the key things we took out of the farm pilot program was just that connection with some of the experts around the place. And David and Sarah would never have dreamt of being able to ring Tom prior to being involved in this group. And we've heard that story again and again, not necessarily about Tom, but other experts that were relevant from other farmers in some of the um, other farm pilots with the other meat processors. So some key roles there, and the last one is um, mentor. And we found that um, for some of the groups, having a group mentor was really quite crucial um, for just keeping the group going and then for some follow-up and support individually as well. So that's what RMPP Action Network is built on. That's the basis of it. That's the reason why we talk about facilitators um, and connectors and experts. I think we're really good. Um, there's some great people out there who ha have both of those hats, the facilitator and expert hat. We're really encouraging people in RMPP Action Network to, to only have one hat on at a time. You're a facilitator or you're an expert. And focus in on doing it well um, and getting the most out of your group. So, at this point, I'm now going to show you another clip, because you've probably heard enough of my voice. Um, and that gives you another, uh, just a quick overview of RMPP Action Network and hopefully covers off a few of the things that I haven't. Our sheep and beef farming businesses have made huge gains over the past 30 years. And there are many new technologies to help our businesses become more profitable. However, managing a farm business is becoming more complex and it can be difficult to know where to go for trustworthy advice that gives you confidence to continue making improvements to your farm. We all know someone who seems to be doing better than us. Imagine a world where you can easily get hold of the expertise you need so that your farming business can move ahead. At its heart, RMPP Action Network has been set up to help sheep and beef farming businesses access quality advice and expertise to lift your profitability so that you can do the things you want to do. So what does this look like? Well, 
We know through a lot of research and trials that when small groups of farm businesses come together with a shared focus and use the relevant expertise and put that into practice, good things happen. So, how does it work? A group is formed, a plan is created and approved, and then activities can happen alongside the relevant expertise. The plan and activities will be decided by the farmers in the group who will choose what topic they want to look at. Examples could be early weaning, soil management, investigating new pastures, or animal genetics. And we won't be leaving you on your own to sort out your groups. All over the country there are people who have been trained to help guide you in setting up a group and with ongoing facilitation support. They will ensure that you and the other farming businesses get the most out of your group. RMPP Action Network is rolling out nationwide with all red meat producers being given the opportunity to join an action group and together find ways to increase profitability. Don't hold back and wait. The sooner you register your interest, the sooner we can get you sorted into an action group and the sooner you can start. So what does this mean? Simply, the sooner you get on board, the longer you will benefit from the opportunity and the quicker you will be making more profit. And what are the next steps for you to take as a farming business? Talk to your local rural professional, bank manager, advisor, meat processor or beef and lamb representative about getting a group set up. Or they might be in touch with you about coming on board. Alternatively, to hear more about how it works and what it could mean for you, check out some of our stories on our website. RMPP Action Network has been created for you, so start thinking about how your business could benefit and get in touch today. So that is one of the key questions we get, is how do we get started? We've got some ideas. Um, on our Action Network website, we've got a whole list of connectors and facilitators now in the RP directory. Uh, so that's a result of the uh, people coming through the facilitation courses. So I'd encourage you to, if you're interested, jump online and see if there's anyone there that you know. Um, or talk to your beef and lamb people that are here today. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that you're probably going, well, that sounds all really good, but what's actually happening? Like, is there stuff happening? Are there groups happening? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked. Because there's 14 now that we've got actively underway. We've got another 50 in the system that are forming and um, about to submit their plan. And then we've got another 30 or 40 that we know of that are kind of in the wings. So it started. There's smallish numbers, but we can see that there's more coming through. Uh, and that's like action groups right from Southland. Uh, I think the furthest north one is about up here somewhere. So yeah, and we've got a whole range of topics through from pasture persistence, uh, looking at um, business management, uh, financial management, uh, and uh, yeah, a whole range of different topics that are being covered at the moment. So yeah, cool, Mel. Oh, yes, good point. I did need to talk about that. It's always. Always. Terms and, terms and conditions. conditions. So, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, every farm business that gets involved with Action Network uh, gets allocated $4,000. Now, that goes into a group fund. Uh, so, that's seven, uh, a group fund for, to be able to pay for a facilitator and for appropriate experts, depending on the, the topic or the issue or the challenge that you've selected as a group. Uh, the, uh, the group size is between seven to nine farm businesses. Now, if you think back to the model that we talked about, it doesn't mean that we're saying that the groups will be seven to nine individuals because we want the farm teams involved. So that could be at least 18 people, minimum, potentially. Um, so already our small group is kind of a larger group, but that's why we've kept the numbers at seven to nine farm businesses. Um, it, as a farm business involved in, uh, in, in an action group, at the start of year two, you will be asked to chip in $800 towards your group fund. So that goes again into your group fund and is pulled um, for the use of the group for the uh, facilitators and experts. And we're defining anyone who can be involved as you've got to be basically a contributor to the production of red meat. So we have got people who are forming groups with a couple of dairy farmers who produce cows. You know cattle to go, uh, calves to go into the um, beef trade. So, yeah, we're hopefully making it open to um, as many people as is 
possible for a particular topic. Cool. Thanks, Mel. So I just thought you'd like to get an overview of what all the topics were. So a lot of shared themes coming through. Uh, so that origin brand that we heard earlier made um, quite an impact and we've got at least eight to ten tables in the room where the environmental uh, challenges certainly came up in um, ETS, etc. Profitability was on the list, um, people looking at uh, how do we analyse our current business performance and, and look at areas to drive profitability. Biosecurity in there, no doubt, after mycoplasma, it's something many of us are thinking about. So a lot of shared topics within this room. You probably go to farming for profit days, uh, you might go to a vet field day on worm resistance and use and come away and go, you know, that's something I, it's great being here on this one field day, but there's more I'd love to dig into about that. Or I'm running a part of my farm system and I just never get the chance to explore that bit on its own. So that's really where this action network and being part of a group, it's a chance to dig deep, drill into one particular topic and we've had groups that came together around you performance and at their third activity go, you know what, it's actually about soils. We need to start with understanding our soils to drive feed production to be able to feed the ewes better. So you can start with one topic and take a sharp left turn and cover something else and come back. It's really flexible. So we're giving you the sand pit, um, getting some kickstart funding to support farmers to really drill into what's relevant for you and going to drive your businesses. So just to wrap up, just to add to your wee black bags of take home goodies, um, this little pamphlet outlines the sort of steps to getting groups set up and all the contact details on the back, 0800 for any questions, plus our websites. And for your interest, this is a farm results booklet which captures the stories of our 70 odd pilot farmers and their journeys over the two years. So what they were looking to achieve on farm and what they got out of being part of their groups, what have been some of the results. And all of those are on that back table. So just well worth having a really interesting stuff come out of it. So that's all from us and I think we're open to a couple of questions. Thank you, Jason. Look, we'd just like to, uh, to thank both Mel and Denise for the, the session on RM, RMPP and as a, as a gesture of our appreciation, there's two, two fine bottles of Eno. Thank you.